Tell me what looks better, this or this? This or this? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to make your on-screen elements look this amazing with a device mock-up. The world just keeps getting more digital and so much of our experience is on devices. So it makes sense that at some point in time, you're gonna wanna show somebody something like a website or an app you've built or a mobile game or even just some cool footage that you've got. And doing this on a device mock-up will not only show users what the experience will look like on a device, but what it's gonna feel like in the context of the entire screen viewed from a distance. This also helps users to feel more engaged with what you're showing them because because it feels like they can actually reach out and touch it. I've used these device mockups before in my own videos, and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use them. I've downloaded these two mockups for Motion Array, and I'll link to them in the description below if you wanted to grab them and follow along. One of them is hyper-realistic, and the other one is super artistic and surreal. And the best part about these is how ridiculously easy it is to use them. As soon as you open it up, this is what you're presented with. This is the exact motion of the device, and in order to add in your own footage, all you have to do is this. Just go up to the folder that says edit or image and open up the composition for the section that you like and drag and drop your own elements or footage in and they're already working. It's just that simple. What I really love about these templates is that they capture so much of the detail that would otherwise be really tough to get in a way that looks pleasing. You've got realistic looking screen glare. You've got sort of these minor refractions happening on the edges of the glass so that it feels like you're actually looking through glass to see your screen. The device itself looks super glossy and has perfect edges and ah, it's just so nice to look at. If you wanted to capture this all for yourself, you'd have to film a laptop or phone with tracking markers on it, track the camera, mask out the markers, figure out exactly what the screen position is, stretch out your elements to fit that new composition, make sure the edges feel like they're real, add some fake screen glare. It gets really tough really quickly. Now, I have an entire tutorial about how to do a screen replacement if that's what you're looking for, but for me personally, this method is just so much easier. Click, drag, done. Now that you have these on-screen elements working, just make sure that you have the correct section showing that you want. Now for this next example, because I knew it was gonna end up on a fake iPhone, the easiest way to actually get the video was to screen capture it using a real iPhone. And the way you can do this is really simple because there's built-in screen recording software on all modern iPhones. And that's the video that I'm using to put on the fake iPhone in this sequence. And to adjust timing, all you have to do is move the clip forward or backward in time. Now, if you wanted something to stop completely, like let's say you want wanted this section to remain on screen for the rest of the animation, but you didn't film it that way to begin with, just make a cut here using Control Shift D and then right click on this section and add a freeze frame here. Now what you have is that frame is present for the rest of the animation. Perfect if, for example, you had a web page that you wanted to animate in and then remain on that exact frame for the viewer to be able to clearly see and read. Now let me show you what some different style versions look like. Let's open up this fantasy version here and I'll show you some more. So you can see here that it doesn't look real, but instead stylized. Now this is cool because it's not perfectly realistic. It allows you to do some interesting things to help draw in the eye of the viewer. If we add in some of our own footage like we did before, we can see that it's super easy to use, but it also adds a little bit more of a flair here. You can see that now we have a glow coming out of our device that makes it look like the room is filled with vapor or atmospheric smoke. The light from our video is actually interacting with the space in the world around it. A super creative touch. Not only that, but just like before, we have elements like screen glare and wrapping around the curved edges of the glass that make the whole thing not only feel flawless, but like you can actually reach out and touch it and you know what it feels like. And now that you've done that super easy process, you're probably gonna wanna add this video into a larger sequence that you're working on. So I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can add this into your larger edit if you're working in another program like say Premiere Pro, for example. You can simply export this edit as a new video file by hitting Control or Command and M, or by going up to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. Now click on this button here and choose the format and codec that you'd like to export this with. For me personally, I like QuickTime Animation or ProRes 422 for either a lower file size or a higher file size but higher quality result. Then click here so that you can choose where you want to export this video file to and to be able to name it exactly what you want. Click Render and your finished video file will appear exactly where you told it to. 
that's one way to do it. But my preferred method, if you're using Premiere Pro, is to just save your project and keep in mind the composition name of this sequence that you created. So for me here, it's Watch Scene 01. And now I'm gonna open up Premiere Pro and drag and drop the entire After Effects file that I downloaded originally that has this device mockup in it that I've been working on. And now you can choose which composition you want to add. And I'll choose my Watch Scene 01 here. And boom, now what we have is this live After Effects project file playing in our larger Premiere Pro sequence. And the great thing about doing it this way is that now if we need to make changes to the shot that's appearing on the screen, we just have to swap it out in the After Effects project and it automatically updates in the Premiere Pro sequence. Awesome. Guys, I hope you liked this video and that it's able to help you present your on-screen elements with a little bit more flair and excitement. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I've linked to the device mockups that I actually used in this tutorial in case you wanted to go download those for yourself. And I've also linked to some of my other personal favorites down in the description below. But guys, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching and I can't wait to see all the amazing things you're gonna create.